I do these vlogs about fibromyalgia and I'm very sad and down and sometimes I cry and sometimes I'm just really moody. I often am more expressive when I'm in a, a sad mood. But I thought today while I was I was sitting here I'm in a good mood and and uh, not feeling too bad which you know is not really good to, by comparison to other people's you know bad days really. But you know it's bearable. You learn to, to deal with the pain. I thought what I would do was Make a vlog about some things that are unconventional. Conventional. I had a tongue typo. Anyway, unconventional ways of coping with pain that aren't necessarily um what you would think. Okay. Um, the first one is something that I just discovered on my own, and I am I have no medical experience. I have no medical education. So if you have concern about it, check with your doctor before you do it. However. I noticed when I was drinking coffee that, which I don't do all the time, that there was some relief in the pain in my legs. And my pain in my legs is where it's the worst. Um, it, it, my legs always hurt, and there are days where I feel like the things are going to freaking fall off. Okay, it's like, is my leg going to fall off today? I don't know. Anyway, so. But I discovered that coffee does that, and well, I've had gastro bypass, and my goal is to try to be healthier and to lose more weight. And I really don't like coffee unless it has like you know low-fat milk, you know maybe not skim, but like two percent, and uh, some caramel flavoring. And uh, uh, so that adds a lot of calories and sugar and all that stuff, and we don't we don't want that. So um, what I did, discovered was caffeine pills. Now, you've got to be careful with these. Do not take too many. If you take too many, what happens is you uh, get very hyper and amped up. And also, sometimes your heart can go just a little bit nuts. We don't want that. So, I only take one at a time with hours in between. Um, typically, any caffeine tablet will be the equivalent of like one eight ounce cup of coffee. Like two, three Starbucks, you know would be two or three of these but you know but generally you don't take all the Starbucks you don't drink it all like in one swallow so remember you sip on those things so I recommend caffeine pills check with your doctor if you have any questions do not depend upon me for medical advice <laughs> I didn't even finish high school I got my GED and did a year in college and hated it so no I'm not educated okay <laughs> I just know that I've lived with this for 22 years, and I, what I've seen has helped. Okay, now that's the only thing I'm going to recommend as far as would be considered medicine. And that's not even really medicine. You get that in drinks and food and all that stuff. It's just it's in a concentrated form. Now, these things I got from my new pain doctor. Not the old shady one who wanted to do all kinds of procedures and keep me completely stoned all the time and almost killed me. You know, basically he was making a patient that was a money train. My uh, new pain doctor does prescribe me gabapentin for the nerve pain and uh, uh, Vicodin for the other pain. Uh, he is actually prescribing me less Vicodin than I've been on in a very long time. And it's not morphine or oxycodone, which is what nearly killed me. Sheesh. I felt no pain, but I felt nothing else either. I was, I can't even remember. I can't, I have no memory of that time period. Anyway, same for when, when I was on Klonopin. And there were some crossovers in those medications. Anyway, now these uh, are based on the suggestions of the new doc, who I love because he suggested this stuff. And I've already, I've always done this kind of stuff as well. But just not with the focus on it, you know. Um, he said, do things I enjoy, like listening to music, writing, watching movies, playing video games, that kind of thing. And, and doing like arts and crafts and painting and drawing and all those things. So I have since starting to see him in April, I have started uh, just kind of drenching my life with these things. I've listened to music all day long sometimes. I watch movies all night. If I'm having a fit of insomnia, I watch a lot of movies and listen to a lot of music and I draw and I play games and I do all those things. And what that is doing is, one, is stimulating the pleasure centers of your brain, which release the happy, feel-good chemicals. And two, it's a distraction. You're, you're not sitting there thinking, 
oh my gosh, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. You know what I mean? You're, th you're, you're focusing, especially like in the case of a video game, you are so focused on, you know, trying to get Mario to do what you want him to do without, you know, getting, getting killed by something, that you go out of your head. And that's something that's very important when you have a chronic pain condition, is getting out of your head. If I'm too much into my head, if I can't get out of my head, I am depressed. I mean, like, deeply, clinically depressed. And, you know, I take medication for that. And because depression is a problem that I've had since I was a kid, um, just like anxiety. And I take medication for that as well. But um, the thing is, is, is if you are in your head about the pain you're feeling and about all the things you can't do and, and want to do and, and all the limitations you have in your life and all the suffering you have in your life, you're going to just focus on that with like a, a laser point intensity and you're going to hurt more. You're going to feel worse more and you're going to feel like shit about yourself. Now, I'm not going to lie. Having fibromyalgia, you feel like hell. You look like hell. Like me. I always look like, like hell. I look like, you know, I've been road hard, hard and put away wet. <laughs> but you know and it you know it's just it's just kind of hellish and no person should ever have to live with something like this ever I mean it's horrible and why uh, our bodies have decided to unleash such chaos and such you know dysfunction I, I don't know and neither do the science Science doesn't know either. They're trying to find out, but it's not like it's cancer or AIDS or any of those things. And, you know, meanwhile, you've got people who are becoming miserable and suicidal and, and overweight and depressed and all that stuff. And, you know, we're miserable, but we're not, it's not terminal. That's the problem is it's not terminal. It doesn't kill us. As I like to say on really bad days, it gives you all the suffering and pain of a, of a terminal disease, but doesn't have the decency to kill you. So, you know, and, it's, and no, I don't have a death wish. Oh, good grief. I want to live. I've got too much stuff i got to do in this world. But I can't do it until I get some proper treatment for the fibromyalgia because it keeps me just, like, on hold. That's, that's the perfect description. Fibromyalgia puts your life on hold and you have you're still the same person in your mind you still want to do all these things like I want to go out in nature and hike and, and talk to little animals and and go tra I want to travel I want to do all this stuff you know I want to see the world I want to see art I want to you know just experience the world experience life but what am I doing I'm sitting on my ass miserable in my recliner in the room that is my geek girl cave with all the things in it that like it's a teenager's room when I'm 44 it's it's a spare bedroom that basically it's where it's an art studio it's where I play games it's where I listen to music it's where I do my computer it's where I have my uh, TV a DVD player and it's my fun room basically and I have action figures and comic books and posters and and Hello Kitty and uh, just all kinds of ridiculousness that it's, it's where I live because Again, I'm stimulating the pleasure centers of my brain to help release good feeling chemicals so as not quite as bad. So, that's my recommendation. If there are things you love to do, if you love to do arts and crafts, if you love to paint, if you love music, if you love, you know, even if you can take small walks, if you love nature, you know, make sure you have some with you, you know, in case gravity catches a hold of you and knocks you to the ground like it does to me sometimes. Yeah, it's like, walk, 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 poof. <laughs> Why is my face on the floor? Oh, the floor is so dirty. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it's happened to me a few times. Anyway, um, but, you know, and also, uh, something else, I've, I've got another recommendation. Uh, something I have noticed uh, it helps me a lot when I can do it. It's kind of expensive and hard to do and not uh, readily available for someone who has no car. So it's kind of hard to, to get to like Whole Foods. But when I'm eating all organic, even if I'm eating sugar, for example, uh, if it's, you know, like raw uh, sugar cane as opposed to processed. Um, but uh, 
when I'm eating organic, I feel better. It, it, I really do feel better. And uh, uh, my pain isn't quite as bad. My nerve pain is better. Excuse me. Allergies. Welcome to Arkansas. Allergies all year long. Um, but uh, eating organic, I just feel better. I really do. I, and, it, you know, my fibromyalgia symptoms are just, it's not a huge leap. But, you know, the way I, I put it is, you know, I, I try to take every little tiny grain of help and put them all together and they form like a big ball of help. And it's never, I'm never, you know, 100% okay, but every little tiny bit helps. So, you know, doing aqua aerobics for people with fibromyalgia, it's, it's a low intensity class, helps. Eating organic helps. Taking the medication I'm giving helps. Um, music helps. You know, uh, you know, movies, games, all that stuff. All those things together make a big ball that cuts it down some. And that's the goal. You want to cut it down. There's no cure. There's no way to completely control it or completely eliminate the symptoms. All they can do is treat them and try to relieve them. And, you know, and right now my biggest problem is insomnia. Oh, and the thing is, when I, I'm having a spell of insomnia, I become so manic. And I talk online so much about nothing. And I tweet to people about nothing. And I tweet, just in general, about nothing. Just ramble, ramble, ramble. And a lot of, like, introspection, you know. I start analyzing myself publicly. So... <laughs> That's okay. I'm not ashamed of any aspect of myself. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I talk a lot. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I share too much or that I'm the queen of TMI. I own that. I'm weird. I am the queen of TMI. I am also the typo queen. And I, 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 you got to understand. I just tap, 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 and then send. And then I'm like, oh crap. I, I had a typo in there. Oh crap, I had 15 typos in there. You know, and if it's in a situation like on Facebook where I can edit it, hey, bonus. But uh, often it's I like on Twitter or things and things like that, and it's like, oh, I look like a complete moron. I swear I'm not a moron. I just type with, but like, these fingers, self-taught. You know, I never had typing officially, and it's, I mean I can type fast, but that's part of the problem. It's like I talk too fast for like speech to text on my phone. And it comes up gibberish. And I'll, I won't even uh, proofread it. And I'll send it. And people are like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, the thing. I'm talking about the thing. Or, you know, whatever the thing is. And they're like, okay. But you said, you know, like, rubber baby buggy bumpers are from hell. And monsters fly out of your nostrils. You know? <laughs> oh, and then sometimes on, on speech to text, it comes out really dirty. Unintentionally. Anyway, when you're tweeting to your 70, I mean, when you're not tweeting, but texting to your 70-year-old aunt and you uh, have a habit of not proofreading and you look down and it's just like filthy, you're like, oh, no, I got to really check that more often. Anyway, okay, those are my, my advice. Advice is my, this is my advice. Whatever. <laughs> Brain, mouth, no, connect. No, no, hmm. Anyway, um, those things, I, I suggest if you don't do those things and you have fibromyalgia or other chronic pain uh, conditions, try them and see if they relieve your pain like they help with mine. Um, if not, well, find something that will, will stimulate the pleasure centers of your brain, whatever that may be, and just go for it. Just go, just go after it like it's the last train in the night out of a burning town. Okay. Bye.